Here's a pair of just standard safety goggles. Notice they've got in the top and sides vent holes. If you're in a chemical, nuclear, or biological situation, the last thing you want is to get any of that stuff in your eyes, your nose, or your mouth. Since they don't sell them any other way, we'll take a piece of clear tape and we'll seal them holes up right across the top. I've never done this before, but I just know it'll work. It's similar to what we used in the nuke plants. All right, now we got the hole sealed. Now, no chemical or nuclear or biological material can enter my eyes. That takes care of that. Now we got to go for the nose. This is not what you'd use in a nuke plant, but it would be better than nothing. That goes over your mouth and your nose. Here's some cotton balls. If you had nothing and, and didn't have anything, you could take one of these cotton balls, pull a chunk out of it like that. If you had to spit on it or dip it in a little bit of water and dampen it, you would stick it up your nose and breathe through your nose and keep your mouth shut. At least take care of your lungs and the interior part of your body. CNB is chemical, nuclear, and biological. All three of them kill you. Not sure which one would be the worst way to go, but I guarantee you none of them would be pleasant. We're taking a standard painter's suit, which has never been opened up yet. And say it flew over you, spraying chemicals on you and biologicals. It would at least keep some of it off of you. Some of them are paper with uh, nylon threads running through them or whatever. This looks like pretty good grade. It wasn't cheap. It was about a $5 setup. When you take the bottom of the suit, make sure it is on the outside of your boots. And you tape it tight. That seals it. As long as this suit's on the outside of your boots, none of that CNB stuff will get inside your boot. And it's always handy when you tear that tape off to fold the end of it under and leave yourself a tab. That way you can undo it easy. Gloves go inside the sleeve, just like the boots. These are not what I would choose to wear. I would use a pair of latex gloves. There ain't nothing going up that sleeve. Now, Undressing is just as important as dressing. Normally, if you're in a nuke plant, you'll have cloth booties over your shoes. But what you would do is you'd walk up to the step-off pad, get rid of your booties. You'd slip them off your shoes. See why you want to put the tab on it? Gloves are the last thing you take off, and there's a way to take those off, too. Carefully unzip. You peel yourself out of it the best you could. They've got your gloves on, don't you? They're not sealed, but they still got them on, and all that's clean up in here. Now, this is the way you take your gloves off. You take one glove like this, and you peel it off backwards till you get it down with your fingers still in it. And then you grab this other glove, and you peel it backwards. And then you use the inside of this glove to finish shaking that glove off. So that would be a makeshift uh, protective measure against a chemical, nuclear, or biological release. Well, I think the show's over, folks. <laughs> Let's talk about Bo here a minute. Say how he's always by my side, always on my bed, and he slept by my side since he was an eight-week-old puppy this long. That's a loyal dog. Come along, Jack, take my call. The first beep on the phone, that means they've, they've connected me to, the, to his board. That means my name's on his computer. And then when I hear the click, shh, that means I'm on the air. Whatever it was for two gallons of iced tea a day, I don't know what I'd do. Chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia, I sweat so much. I bet you I lose more than one liter a day. Misery meter say 79. That tells you how bad you're supposed to feel that day. Now we're getting bumper music on the Jack McClam program. I may be called upon to speak words of wisdom at any moment. Hello? Yeah. Next hour? Okay. I'll hang up and get off the air and put him on the computer so my guest. I got a videographer, a young man from Utah that's in here shooting a survival video. that goes along with my Ebeard 42 uh, survival manual. I'll let you get back to your work. You got buttons to push. I used to run audio at a TV station, so I know what the deal is. All right, thank you.
We're going to shoot a little section here that uh, items that you put in your boogie bag and backpack. What you're going to do is you're going to lay all this stuff out in a pile and you're going to sort out must have things and like to have things. Then you're going to try to pack your bag about six times. Limit the size and weight to fit the bag and prioritize what you put in that bag. You obviously can't get all this stuff in that one little boogie bag. We'll start out here real quick. And I have a uh, common painter's plastic cloth, heavy duty. Make a good ground cloth. Clean changes the clothing for the woods. In this little bag, there are two t-shirts, there are two pairs of socks, and two pairs of underwear. Now we're gonna go into the medical bags. Now we have Neosporin in here. I've got gauze in this one. I've got super glue to close wounds with. Tape. Now this is a good bag to show. We've got potassium iodate tablets in case they drop a nuclear bomb. And that'll inhibit the radioactive iodine uptake in your thyroid gland and replace it with potassium iodate, not potassium iodide. The difference being iodide will make you and your pets sick at your stomach. Potassium iodate will not. And if you're like an old geezer like me and wear glasses, better have yourself a little eyeglass repair kit with screws and an eyeglass screwdriver. These are indispensable. Needle and thread, slows, sew up your uh, ripped clothing. Oh, instant fire starter, Bic lighter. Here's another interesting item. Common surveyor's tape. You tear off a strip about so long, and you tie one at your starting point, and you walk to some point you can see in the woods, and you keep looking behind you. And when the first one you tied up is hard to see, you tie another one up. And you pick your next point in the woods to walk to. And when you get to that point, keep looking behind. When the second one gets hard to see, you'll tie to the third one. And you'll leapfrog and set up a trail through the woods. I guarantee you, you can come out of that woods and backtrack down there just following this flagging. LED light, long lasting. This one's really neat. It's got a laser pointer that goes about a quarter of a mile, I think. That one would make policemen very nervous if you shined it on them. Here's something a lot of people haven't seen is a uh, pulled up lantern candle. It'll also heat a tent, but you don't want to keep the tent fully closed. It'll suck all the oxygen out while you're going to sleep before the candle burns out. I've done it. That's the candle that goes in it. Another indispensable item. You can set up temporary shelters. This is Mason's line that they use for laying brick. 250 feet and I think in a roll. Very lightweight, very compact. You can tie it between two trees and tie up your uh, tarps. This is a Gerber's folding saw. Push the button, blade folds in. Here's my MacGyver tool. A pair of pliers on one end. If you look, there's all kinds of tools in this handle that fold out that you can use, screwdrivers. Um, it's got all kinds of stuff in there. Of course, my uh, folding pocket knife with the three blades in it. I have a hard time closing this. And here's a uh, straight bladed hunting knife that you'd carry on your utility belt. We go in its holster and you notice it's got a gutting hook on it. 